it also kind of provides this nice little nutrient reservoir in the center of the bed. What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all having a wonderful day. It is Friday, December 8th here in South Georgia. And several weeks ago we took some really pitiful looking lettuce transplants, put them in one of these raised beds, kind of brought them back to life a little bit. Today I've got some even worse looking cabbage transplants that we're going to try to revive in another one of these raised beds. And oh yeah, going to do a little worm update as well because a lot of people have been asking. So in our last video, we talked about some of this in-ground cabbage, which is looking great. And then we got some more cabbage started in the greenhouse so we could have a little cool season succession planting. But then I got to thinking about what we could plant in this bed since the frost has now killed this basil. And then I noticed these, which were just sitting on a pallet outside the greenhouse, were still alive. They don't look great, but they are still alive. So I thought, hey, let's stick these in the ground and see what happens. Maybe we can kind of connect the dots and fill the gap between those two plantings and end up getting three cabbage harvests during the cool season. Now, obviously, before we plant some cabbage in here, we've got some cleanup to do. We need to get that dead basil out of there. And I also want to take our little in-bed worm farm, which is hidden kind of underneath all this dead ageratum. I want to move that out of this bed and put it over there where we're going to be planting that cabbage. So we've got us a nice little plan of action here. Move our worm box. I'll show you our big worm box over there by the barn. We're gonna amend that soil pretty heavily where that basil was. And then we'll try to revive some of this cabbage. Now this ageratum here isn't dead as a doornail, but it's had a good run and I need to move it out of the way so I can get my worm box out. So we're gonna call it quits on the ageratum today. Just gonna try to clip this stuff out of here not take too much dirt with us and then we should be able to get to our worm box all right now that we've got that azure out of the way we've got some room to work now i haven't added anything to this worm box in a long time because it was hard to get to it was consumed by all that azure item, so i doubt there's anything in here oh there's a frog in there but probably no worms down there like i said this hasn't been touched in a while just because we couldn't get to it but now we can move it start using it again now it may look like we should just be able to grab this thing like this right here and just shimmy it on out of there but i know from previous experience that that won't work all those roots from that azuratum have got this thing pinned in there pretty tight so we're gonna have to take a little trench and shovel kind of give us a little relief and then we should be able to pull it out of there all right after doing a lot more digging than i thought i was going to have to do i got it dislodged there you can see it's a good bit taller than what it looks like when it's just buried and sitting at soil level we do have some organic matter in there about a quarter of the way full we'll probably just leave that in there and now we've got a place to put it so i cut all those basil plants at soil level no point in trying to pull up all those big plants got those cut out of here got my drip tape pulled back and i'll probably just put it right dead smack in the middle like we normally do and that's about as deep as i want to go we're getting down to the native soil there you can see we're starting to change colors if i dig much deeper i'm liable to cut into my mainline tubing that feeds this raised bed irrigation system so that's going to have to be deep enough one good benefit to doing this is I think we are unearthing a massive nutrient supply here. That's some beautiful soil I just dug up there. Should be full of good nutrients to revitalize this cabbage. So let's set it down in there, get it somewhat level, and we'll start pulling this dirt back around it here. Get it in place so it won't go anywhere. I wish it was buried a little bit deeper, but this will have to work. Now it is unfortunate that we lost all those worms that I had in there when we moved it to that round raised bed, but I happen to know where there's plenty more. So here's our master worm supply right underneath this piece of foam insulation. Now while I don't know a whole lot about vermiculture, I do know this. If you're going to transport worms, you got to do it in a dog's bucket. It is absolutely unethical to transport worms in an Alabama or a Tennessee bucket. So if we take a closer look here, we can see a few scraps left that they haven't eaten. We're getting some really nice castings in here. There's not a lot of chunky stuff left 
all this is really good stuff that could be screened and used as a soil amendment now it's pretty wet right now because we had all that rain this past weekend but there are worms everywhere in here tiny little worms some bigger worms nice dense population of worms so what i'm going to do is just get me a couple shovelfuls of this worm castings worms and all and we'll take that back over to our in bed worm farm and i thought i'd show you this i just took a shovel from kind of deep down in that bed there look at all those worms just everywhere so we've got our worms here safely transported humanely in the dog's bucket and i think we've got enough to probably get this worm box about halfway full which is what i'm going for once we kind of pack it down a little bit should be about halfway full dump them in there like that let it settle down a little bit we'll make sure we have plenty of worms in there so they can devour all these scraps that we add now that round bed really wasn't a good example because we kind of neglected this thing but it worked really well for us this past summer when we had it in one of the taller raised beds surrounded by squash plants so the way this thing works is kind of twofold so obviously we'll put the lid on it here in a minute but it's got all these little holes in the side obviously we can use this for in bed composting we can add all our scraps and stuff here the worms will break those down we kind of reduce our waste footprint but it also kind of provides this nice little nutrient reservoir in the center of the bed so all these plants planted around here will send out feeder roots and kind of get all this goodness going on in the bed here. We noticed that with our squash plants, those roots were traveling a long, long ways to get some of this business inside here. So we're composting in place, but also got a little nice nutrient storage factory here. So displacing and flipping all that soil way down deep is definitely going to help us out. The worms are going to help us out, but these cabbage transplants look pretty rough this is not a red cabbage transplant this is a bravo cabbage transplant which is a green cabbage variety it's all purple because it needs some nutrients so we're going to have to help these things out a lot and that's why i'm still going to put down a healthy help in a coop grow here and we'll get it scratched into the soil and get our drip tape back down now before we added the worm farm here we had four lines of drip tape in this bed now with the worm farm in the middle we can only run two lines of drip tape we were using drip tubing we could curve it around a little bit but drip tape's got to run straight it'll be okay though i think these two lines will be sufficient here we're using the little row starts with the valves on them and these work great in this situation because we don't have to unplug those and plug those holes and worry about changing our main line up we just switch those valves off and we don't have to worry about it assuming we don't need these fittings somewhere else so now we'll start putting some of these pitiful looking root wrapped cabbage babies along our drip tape here i think i'll put them about a foot apart or so along the tape should have plenty enough transplants to do that might even stick one right out here in the middle it's not going to get near as much water as these will but might as well use that space so now we've got 11 more cabbage plants in the dirt that we didn't have earlier this afternoon and hopefully we can do what we did with this lettuce right here which is take a pitiful looking transplant and turn it into some groceries now will that cabbage end up looking as good and getting as big as this in-ground cabbage here doubtful but we should at least get some groceries from it it's not going to hurt to try so i hope you enjoyed the video today as always you can find that coop grow fertilizer and these raised beds on our website at lazydogfarm.com and if you want to see more from that in bed worm farm see it being used on those squash we grew earlier this year watch this video and we'll show you just how impressive those squash roots were so check that out and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm